Hello, hello. Oh, yeah. <coughs> So you got the highest scoring offense in the defensive kids up the field. He's doing some great matchups. Yeah, I think that's how it's supposed to be in the national championship game. The two best. And, you know, that's, that's what we've wanted all year is to play the best. We've played a lot of really good teams. Clemson is obviously the best. They've made it this far. Uh, I think we're going to be ready for them. I think you know, they're a really good team, have a lot of speed, have a good plan. But, you know, I think it's going to be a big challenge for us, so I think we'll be ready. Yep. And I think the quarterback position is the, the most important position in all of sport. Um, and I think myself and Trevor are the two best in the game right now. And I'm, that's, I think that's a big reason why both teams are here. Um, he's a really good player, really smooth, still young, which is crazy. I don't, he's light years ahead of where I was when I was his age. Um, and I'm excited to compete against him. And I think that's the difference maker for both of us. When when teams have everything covered, we can still make plays with our legs. Honestly, just having an off season with my guys. You know, I got here last June, and and most grad transfers come in. December and have a spring ball and and a fall camp and I just had a fall camp in a couple months so having January through August with my guys and everyone coming back from last year I think you know I think the the scheme that we have is great but I think with, with the guys that we have and the and the connection that we have that we would have made it work anyway nah, we're we're 14 and 0 that's exactly where we expected to be you know I I just try to do anything I can to win games whether it's throw for 500 yards or throw for 150 yards. It doesn't matter to me as long as we win. Not really. I, I wanted to be here talking to you guys when everyone else is at home getting ready to watch us. So last year, our tight end was attached to the core all the time. And we were, you know, we had two tight ends sometimes, a fullback. Um, and that just brings more guys into the box and makes it difficult to decipher what, where the blitzes are coming from. Now we can be an empty three by one detached and it makes the, the defense really declare themselves for me. And, you know, I think that's been a big difference maker for us as far as getting blitzes picked up. Yeah, you know, I think there's a similarity as far as, you know, it hasn't been done for a while. You know, the last time here was going to the national championship with 2011, last win was 2007, and back in Athens, you know, it had never been done before. So, you know, that's kind of a similarity, but, you know, I kind of said before the season, when, you, when you're around championship football teams, you know, something just kind of feels different. And, you know, back, going back to, to high school, that's the last time I kind of felt that. And, and we felt it this offseason. Was there a game this year? I know you played so many games. You know, I think everyone wants to, to point to one moment as a turning point. I don't think there was. You know, we felt all offseason that we had worked hard to to be a championship football team, and I knew that we could be. Um, as long as we just practiced with, with intensity and, and focused on getting better every day. So I don't think there is one turning point. I think it's, there's been a lot of cumulative actions that, that have gone into this, going from last year to January to February, and it all gets kind of piled up. Do you, do you need to have a huge game like you did against Oklahoma? 
I think, you know, I always just try to play whatever the game calls for. And, you know, you kind of figure that out in the first quarter. If, if they're scoring a lot, yeah, I'm going to have to go out, throw the ball, throw for a lot of yards, get us down there. But, you know, maybe our, maybe our run game is going. Maybe our defense is stopping them and it's going to be a grinded out kind of game. So you, you just got to feel it out and, and try to do whatever the game calls for to win. Yeah, you know, I throw a lot of, for lack of a better word, 50-50 balls up and just let them go make a play. I try to put it in a, in a position <clears throat> that only they can go and get it. And I have five guys that, that make those plays for me. And that's that's a huge luxury for a quarterback, knowing if, if, if nothing else is, is open, I can just throw it up to those guys and they're going to go make a play for me. Yeah. At all during the season, I mean, limited amount of rushes. What does it say about this team that you can plug in a guy here and there, especially on a stage that was that big for Chris? You know, I was so happy for Chris because for most of the season he's been fourth on the depth chart, and he's just gone to work every single day. You know, he's been the scout team running back, ran his ass off all year for us, and I, I was so happy for him because he's worked so hard for that. Didn't complain a single second. Just went to scout team, ran hard came to the sideline, didn't say a word. And then, you know, when Clyde went down a couple weeks ago, he really started to click and practice. And, you know, I think he deserved that start and went out and showed it. I was so happy for Chris. I know Derek's been dealing with the team for 12 months, but from that PS Bowl workouts last year, are you amazed that his growth so quickly there? I mean, we knew he was going to be a big time talent, but that quickly 12 months to where he's one of the most dominant corners in the NFL. Yeah, he's the best I've seen at that age. He. You know, when he first got here, I was I was throwing his way a lot, to see if he, you know, if he if he was gonna live up to the hype, and you know, I could I could tell early he wasn't a normal true freshman, and he's he's been great for us. He's gonna be a, a really good player for a long time. The intangibles we talk about you and Trevor. I know this is not all part of any questions here. Who's got the better hair between you and Trevor? <laughs> you know, before I cut my hair, I would have to go with me, but his his is flowing right now. I like his. Oh yeah, all the time. You know, when he gets fired up, I gotta, you know, if he's trying to tell me something, I gotta calm him down for a second so I can understand him because he gets fired up sometimes and it's, it's tough to understand. <laughs> No, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I hope it's a home game for us. I hope our, our fans come out and fill that stadium up and, and make it just like Death Valley. Um, you know, I don't really know what to expect though, because I know they, they split the tickets 50 or try to 50 50, but I'm, I'm excited to see how much purple and gold we have in the stadium. That's the, you know, the pedigree of a championship program. They they found a way to win. You know, they didn't play their best game, but they came out on top in the end. And that's what elite programs do. That's what elite people do, and, and elite players do. And you know, we're gonna have to play our best game to beat them because you know they have that in them. Their coach does a really good job mixing up the looks. Um, they'll bring the same blitz and play a different coverage behind it. So I'm going to have to be on my game reading, reading the safeties, reading the coverages, um, seeing blitzes, knowing what coverage they usually like to play behind it, but then verifying it post-snap to, to make sure that it is what I thought it was. And you know, that's going to be a key for us. I mean, it's all on the line. This is the this is the national championship. This is what we wanted to. This is what we thought we would do before the year. This is, you know, what we expected, and we just got to finish it off.
<clears throat> I think, I mean, yeah, that would be a new king. I think we would, we would win the national championship. We'd be on top, and you know, people, someone would have to knock us off. No, I don't think so. You know, I'm just trying to treat it like, just trying to prepare like every other game. You know, we've we got mature guys that prepare very well, and you know, we've we've done very well so far. Just just doing what we do, preparing, going through every week like it's every other game. So that's what I'm trying to do as much as I can this game. Stay in my routine. Stay what I always do. Yeah, we have five guys that are going to play in the NFL in routes every single play, and so they got to account for everybody. You can't, you know, you can't take Jamar and Justin away. We have Clyde, Thad, and Terrace. So you you got to really got to pick your poison and try to, you know, mix mix up the looks on us because otherwise, you know, we're going to pick you apart. And he would have even more if he didn't get hurt. You know, he missed three games. So he's you know, he's a really good player for us, great red zone threat. You know, he's he's come a long way from last year. You know, that usually happens from your your freshman to sophomore year and he's worked really hard to get there. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun chess match for me because you know I know they're gonna have something different, some looks that that I haven't seen before. Because he's just really good at what he does, and that's why he gets paid so much, and that's why they've won a lot of games, and and the, why they're the number one defense in the country. Um, he's so good at what he does, showing showing you one way, blitzing the other. Um, so we know they're gonna have something new for us. So I'm just gonna have to you know read my keys, trust my eyes, and and understand what they're trying to do after the first quarter. No, you call some people around the country that, you know, have, have spent time with him and and have played them in the past to kind of see what they tried to do in those games. But, you know, it's the national championship and he has two weeks to prepare. So we know there's something new. Something new is going to be there, whether it's a blitz, a coverage, a, a, a front. You know, something new is going to be there. We just got to figure it out. I think we are just kind of one and the same from two different places. We have the same mentality, go go run through someone's face, and they're not going to want it a long time. And he's, play, he's coached that way and played that way for a long time, and that's how I've always tried to play the game. And this has kind of been a great match for us, and you know, this, that's, the, that's the mentality this football team tries to bring to the field every day. I spent a little time with him. It was fun. It was fun hanging out with him for for a couple of days. Um, he's no, you don't really talk. You talk a little bit about football, but you try to you know try to just get to know the guys. You know, he's a great guy, great player. Um, it was fun hanging out with him for a couple of days. He's a quiet guy, humble guy, and it was that was nice to see. I, I respect guys that that keep their nose down and just work hard. Yeah, they've they've been at practice for a couple of days. You know, they're they're pretty advanced. TJ has a really strong arm, quick release, and you can tell Max is really really smart for his age. You know, his his dad was Brad Johnson, a great quarterback in the NFL, and you, know, you can tell getting on the board. He's been here for a week and has already drawn up plays. So, you know, I think that'll be a a fun battle to watch in a couple of years. I wish I was three inches taller and 20 pounds heavier. <laughs> He's, uh, I mean, the best, the best thing he does is just win. 20, 25 and 0, something like that as a starter. You know, you, that's just something that not a lot of people can do. No matter what conference you play in, who you're playing, 
he, he hasn't lost yet, and that's that's the number one thing. Yeah, we went in. We went into the season wanting to go more five-man protection because something that I do best is is get blitzes picked up, and so we wanted to go five-man protection. And let me get the blitzes picked up and get get the back out so you have five guys out because when they blitz, they have one extra one one less guy in coverage. So there are lots of one-on-ones across the field if I can get the blitzes picked up, and you know that's been key for us this year, getting those five guys out. Yeah, I just had, you know, two or three bullet points walking up there. Um, knowing who I wanted to talk about, tried to mention everyone that I could that had helped me get there. And, you know, there are so many other people that I couldn't mention because you can't be up there for an hour and a half. But there are so many people that helped me get there that I didn't even mention. They know how much they mean to me. But I just tried to mention as many people as I could and, and make it feel like it wasn't just me that won the Heisman Trophy, it was everyone that helped me. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to, to mention where I came from, because that was part of my journey that helped me get to standing on that stage and you know a big issue in, in southeast Ohio is is poverty and, and hunger and you know I didn't mention it to have this big fundraiser to help a lot of people I just mentioned it because that was what was in my heart at the time and and that was what I was thinking Yeah. That makes me so happy because I know, you know, going going through school, you, you see a lot of people that, you know, couldn't get a lunch because they didn't have enough money. And you know, I think that that made me ha so happy because it's going to help a lot of people for a long time and, and help those kids that I grew up with that you know, didn't have enough food or didn't have enough clothing. Um, so, so that makes me so happy knowing that. Monday. It's pretty easy. We know we knew what we wanted, and no matter what which game we won, we you know we expected to be 14 and 0. We expected to be here, and, and and Monday was the one we wanted from back in January. Cool. Nice, Clyde. <laughs> Um, and I think their their coaching is some of the best in the country. They do a lot of different things. You can tell they have really smart football players because not a lot of teams could show all the looks that they show. So I'm going to have to really read my keys and trust my eyes and, and be disciplined with my eyes to, to understand what they're trying to do because they'll bring blitzes and play four or five different coverages on the back end. So that's, you know, Coach Venables does a great job and, no, I think it's going to be a fun chess match on Monday. It's been just like he has been all year. You know, that's that's how we're trying to treat this. Just like every other game, prepare just like every other game, go through our routine just like every other game as much as we can. Because it's been working so far, and he understands that you just got to keep focused, keep doing what you're doing that got you to this point, and you know we all understand that. Have you talked to Coach O yet? It's very convincing, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, 
you know, I had one conversation with Coach O on the phone, and I was sold just about immediately. I just wanted to come down and confirm it. He's he's a great coach and a great leader, and you know, I was sold on the football part, but I was more sold on his vision of the program, his vision of me as a football player, and where we could go. Finally. Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully everyone comes down and gets as many tickets as we can and we can sell out that stadium in pur purple and gold. You know, I think, I think it's going to be really cool to have all the students here if they can get here and, you know, it's going to be a great atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, he does a lot. No, I think what he does best is when they just let him roam the field in the middle and, and read my eyes and and just poach all the all the different throws through the middle of the field. I think he's really, really good at that. He's really fast, super explosive, good tackler, but you know, he's he's super tough to defend when he's roaming that middle of the field. Well, I'm going to have to look him off. I'm going to have to find him every play because, you know, depending on where they put him, they do a lot of different things. Um, so you got, you got to know where he is all the time to, to know what defense they're trying to do and, and where they're trying to move him to, to do different things. Yeah, it's, you know, we, we, went, we went into the season saying we weren't going to if the if the national title was in New Orleans, we weren't going to let anybody else be there. We had to be there. We weren't we weren't going to be at home on the couch watching two teams coming to our state and and watch them on TV. So that was that was the motivation for us. Yeah. You know, I think I had better hair because I had long hair. Oh no, I didn't have long hair, I cut it already. But when we were at the Manning camp, I had just cut my long hair. And you know, when, I, when, I, when mine was long, it was rivaling Trevor's. You know, we would have, we would have had a real good battle. <laughs> that, was, that was a good look for me. I almost, went, I almost went mullet for the year, but I decided against it. That's just preparation. That's understanding, you know, what you're trying to do on offense and understanding what they're trying to do on defense. Film study, knowing what they like to do behind certain blitzes, knowing what they like to do on third and three to six, third and seven to ten, third and one to three, all those different situations. Because every defensive coordinator has different tendencies on different down and distances. So you got to understand what they're going to do on, on those situations. And if you go into the game preparing like that, you you can narrow down all these different things that they do to, to one, two, or three things, and then you can get your eyes on those keys to understand what they're doing. Um, and just that preparation and, and knowing and understanding the offense allows me to make those decisions. I hope so. Absolutely. I think I'm an honorary Louisianan for life, um, and I, I couldn't be happier about it. Absolutely. That's, you know, as a quarterback, whether you like it or not, you're going to be a leader of the team. And if your team isn't tough, you're not going to win a lot of games. And so as, as a quarterback, you got to exude that toughness, not only throughout the game, but throughout practice, throughout the off-season weight training, throughout sprints. you got to win every sprint. Um, otherwise, you're just not going to win a lot of games if your quarterback's not the toughest player on the team. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's, he's what makes the offense go. Because teams really have to decide if they're going to cover Clyde with, you know, their Mike linebacker, or if they're going to put a safety in the game to try to cover him. And he can run through the tackle. He can run outside. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. 
And I know where Clyde is going to be 100% of the time. Whether if everything is covered downfield, I just have a feeling I know where Clyde's going to be in the flat, right over the ball, left flat, behind the line of scrimmage. And if I get in trouble, I just dump it down to Clyde, and he'll make two or three guys miss and get us three or four and keep us on schedule. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys know I'm a pretty, you know, focused, intense guy uh, when it comes to practice in the game, and they kind of keep me lighthearted sometimes and, and keep, it, keep it fun on the field when, you know, things can get a little intense. Yeah, I think I think the biggest factor was we just had so many people coming back. And you know, I got here last June, and most grad transfers come in in January, and they're able to get spring ball and a fall camp. I and mean, I, I came in with a true freshman and didn't have a lot of time. wasn't named starter until two weeks before the game, so didn't wasn't weren't, wasn't able to to work with the guys like I really wanted to. And then we had a full off season together and we really started clicking. and I understood where they were going to be, when they were going to be there. They understood when the ball was going to be there as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, it did play a, a big part. But at the same time, I think with the guys that we have and the connection we have, we would have made it work with any scheme. And, you know, I think it's been a, a, a big part of what we're doing. But at the same time, like I said, we would have made it work. I think what Thad does is rare. You know, he he's super smart and understands, you know, the timing and spacing of zone coverage and understanding where he is in progressions. You know, that's that's something that you don't see a lot in, in college football players. And we have five guys that really understand what we're trying to do and understand coverages and zones and progressions. And so they can tempo their routes to get where they need to be on time. What whether they're slow off the line because they're the fourth progression or they're fast off the line because they're the first progression, they, they understand that. And I think you know, Thad not only understands that and routes and coverages, but understands what they're trying to do in run blocking schemes and will put his face in some, another man's face and move him where he doesn't want to go. And that's, that's what makes Thad really special. Yeah, I think the way, you know, you've always had to be smart as a quarterback if you wanted to be really, really good, but I think you can't get away with not being smart anymore, if that makes any sense. You used to have some quarterbacks that could get away with, without being smart with arm strength and their legs, but now with all these different coverages people are playing, you have to be able to understand coverages and protections and blitzes. Probably helped me a little bit. You know, it's hard to it's hard to say because you don't have anything to compare it to because I don't. That's all I know. But uh, I would say it probably helped me a little. I did not. You know, he's helped me out a little though. Nice to meet you, sir. Yes. You got one. You got one. Yeah. So, heard you're a good basketball player. I mean, I don't know if it's compared to my skills. You know, I'm kind of like the Clyde Drexler of my day. But if you compare your basketball skills to a player in the NBA, or I mean, anybody, who are you comparing yourself to? Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. Could you expand on that? You know, I think he scored 44 points on like four dribbles. You know, I can spot up the. I can. Uh, I thought you were a big Delhi guy. Oh yeah, Delhi guy for sure. Mentality, Delhi shooter, Clay Thompson. Mix them together. No, not Scal, not Scalabrini. <laughs> the Red Rocket. Say it again. Going 
Yeah, you know, I think I haven't really reflected on it a lot because, you know, I really want to win this game. But that might be a question for me after the game. <laughs> By extra time, you mean these two weeks? You know, after the first week, so I, I, I treated the first week like a game week, and then this week was kind of just icing on the cake, but I kind of, towards the end of this week, I got a little tired of watching film, because I just wa I watched it all. And then you can only watch so much before you're, you're just ready to play the game. And then, so it did help, but you got to be careful overloading information, too, in these two weeks, because... You know, I'm a super focused guy that, that likes to look at every single look, but I try to go into the game understanding the things they like to do most and just buzz the things that they've done one or two or three times throughout the year. So I've, I've had to kind of stop myself sometimes and not watch everything the same amount that I do, um, the stuff they do the most. So it, it's going to help us for sure, but they're going to have something new for us, and, and we're going to understand that. You know, we, we've met one time at the Manning camp, haven't really stayed in touch, but, you know, he seems like someone that I would like to get to know and seems like a good dude that, that works hard and is a winner. You know, it's hard to say because they do so many different things and so many play so many different coverages and blitz so much. You know, I think we're just going to have to go in – understand and they like to do a lot of things and try to find zones that they vacate because when they when they disguise and bring it from another way there's still zones out there you just have to understand what they're doing and understand the coverage behind it so that's going to be the biggest thing is exploiting when they do blitz and, and finding those zones Yeah, you do. You do have to do that. But before every game, I kind of close my eyes for the 15 minutes before we go out and just kind of take a nap a little bit just to calm myself out down before I go out, think about, you know, executing certain plays, visualizing defenses that we could see. <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't. I don't know. I felt weird doing it. They didn't really want anybody touching me like that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this has been the motivation since we started in January from the moment we walked off the Fiesta Bowl field last year. This is what we wanted which is why we haven't celebrated a lot of wins, because this, this is the one we wanted. This is what we've been working for. Are you surprised how mature a group of 18, 18-year-old guys have been this year? I wouldn't say surprised is the right word. You know, we had a lot of people coming back from last year. A lot of people, you know, we had a young team last year that, you know, won, won a lot of games but should have won more, and we understood that. So that was, that was the focus going into the year. I knew we had mature guys, talented guys that could get to this point. 25 and 0. That's the biggest thing. He's he's a winner. He's a he's a ball player that just seems to to love playing football and finds ways to win. They do everything. You know, there's there's not a lot of teams that can get smart enough guys to play every coverage in the book, have every blitz in the playbook, and they do it. And you can tell how how well coached they are because while they do all these things, they're not unsound in what they do. So, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us to, to see what they're doing and try to exploit it. I don't think it'll be that hard. You know, I'm going to prepare like I have every other game, trust my preparation, and just treat it like a football game. It's still, still just ball. That's what I've said. You know, that's what I said when I, when I won the Heisman. It's just ball, and 
I'm ready to ready to go out there and play it. No, I don't have to lobby for the FaceTime. I think I have plenty. Uh, I have to have to lobby for the O line and their FaceTime because they they need some more. Yeah, they're they're the best at what they do in the country, and you can see it every week when they make their with their hype film, and you know it blows up every single week on, on Twitter. So they're they're the best at what they do. Happy birthday. I'll put on I'll put on the yellow hat for you. Yeah, you got it. Happy birthday. Go celebrate. You're in New Orleans. Nice. I mean, it's kind of a nap. I wouldn't say I'm fully conscious. Um, yeah, I put the towel around my neck, close my eyes, and whatever happens, happens. If I fall asleep, then I fall asleep. Um, but yeah, I do that before every game. Yeah, you know, I didn't. I understood that it was a poor area when I was young, because um, you're driving through and you see these, you know, low-income homes that you, know, you haven't really seen before. Because I was moving around a lot growing up and lived in you know, middle, upper middle class neighborhoods and then you come to Athens and the Plains and see all these low income housing and you know you understand at a young age but you don't really understand the, the magnitude of it until you get older. <clears throat> yeah, yeah I probably you know she wasn't she wasn't a teacher when I was really young. She became a teacher when I was about sixth fifth sixth grade um, so she did you know kind of bring a different perspective for me for sure oh yeah I mean so our, our high school is on a hill and you look down and there's you know the trailer parks and the, the low income homes that don't just don't look that up, up scale and, and you know you can see it every day when you walk up to the high school so he was with the Saints and you know one of my best friends JT Barrett was with the Saints at the time um, and, and coach Joe was kind of JT's guy because he was the assistant quarterback coach I think was his title and so JT was practice squad and um, they were kind of going through the script together every day and J JT called me when he got the job he said you guys are going to be best friends and from that moment on I knew you know we we're gonna we we're gonna have a good connection and understand you know what each other was thinking on every play you know I think he deserves a lot of credit coach E deserves a lot of credit all my guys deserve a lot of credit you know we couldn't have, nobody could do anything we're t that we're doing without each other and this has kind of been a special season for us you know, there's not a lot of. You know, this doesn't come around every every year where you have five guys with the connection that I have with them and the connection with the offensive staff. You know, it's really like you know we hold everybody each other accountable, and we're also great friends. Not only just players, but you know, I, I feel like I'm friends with Coach E and Coach Joe and Coach O too. So it's kind of you know an NFL approach to it.
hard work. That's that's where it starts. Trusting your preparation, trusting your work ethic, and understanding that you know you could quit or you can just keep working the way that you've been working and, and trust that it's going to work out eventually. Listen to Kid Cudi. Yeah, listen to Kid Cudi, Man on the Moon. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want to speak too much on someone else's situation, but, you know, he felt like it was the best decision for him, and I, you know, I think it's a good one that, that he made, and he's a, he's a special player that, you know, I look forward to competing, competing against again at the next level just like we did for two years in college. Did it? Did it what? You know, it's never fun when you get shut out. So you know, you you do think about it every once in a while. But you know, I don't think it was like a defining moment for the team. I think, especially this year, we just went into every single game saying we we're going to dominate the opponent in front of us, and going into Tuscaloosa was exactly the same as playing Northwestern State at home and that's the way we thought about it and I think it really helped us. No, you don't really think about it like that. You think you're going up you know, I feel like I'm going up against the defensive coordinator and the defense. You don't, you don't really think about the quarterback that's on the other side of the ball. You understand that, you know, when you're going against good offenses, you're going to have to score a little more. But, you know, I think about it more as going against the defense. Yeah. Yeah, we're, I mean, they're going to have something new for us because he's so good at what he does. And we're going to have to manage it the best way that we can because he's going to get us because he's every once in a while because he's so good. We just have to get him more than he gets us. Ooh. Put me on the spot on that one. Yeah. You're saying college, high school, middle school, high school? Um, you know, my favorite subject is science, I guess. Um, physics in particular. So I would say, you know, Mr. Springer at, uh, at Athens High was kind of put me onto physics and and got me into you know astrophysics videos and all that kind of stuff absolutely yeah and I think of the same way that coaches can make a difference in players lives you know not everyone plays sports so I think teachers can can be that what coaches have been for me um, for other students it's very important you know my mom's a principal and you know, a lot of places have trouble getting funding for for schools and, and whatnot, and I think that's that's super important for especially low income areas that that don't have a lot of resources. Yeah. He's he's what makes our offense go, and. We were able to get through the last game without him, but we wouldn't be able to win this game without him. He he keeps the defense on their toes because he's so good out of the backfield catching passes and, and running in between the tackles. So he he's a special player. And he's so different from everyone else because he's a, basically a receiver out of the backfield as well as his, as his explosiveness in the run game. You know, not a lot of people can do what he does.
That's that's been the motivation from you know when I started as a freshman in high school. I wanted to to be on this stage playing this game and you know bringing it to Louisiana, playing the game in Louisiana would mean so much to the state. Every day, every day, yeah. You know, we lost in, uh, in dramatic fashion. So I think about that one a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, I had, a, I had an interception in that playoffs though, yeah, and I had 10 tackles in one game. So I think I was pretty decent corner still. Yeah, this is what I wanted to do. You know, my brother played in the in the BCS game back in 2001, and they got throttled by that Miami team with I think they had you know like 13 Hall of Famers on it or something. Um, but this this has been my goal for a long time. I did go to that game. Yeah, this is the Rose Bowl. Cool.